Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions. I asked you guys about two months ago for some questions for a Q&A video. I had planned to film this video like two months ago, but for whatever reason, things just got busy and I had so many other videos that I wanted to get out that I'm just now getting around to filming this. So better late than never, right? So I'm just gonna be going down the list and answering some questions. I wanted this video to be not so much makeup related, so if your question was very specific to makeup, if I do skip it, um, just know that I'm keeping these questions as great suggestions for videos because I feel like makeup questions would be uh, better served in like a makeup video, if that makes sense. So we are just gonna kinda go down this list. So I have, okay, the first one is from Karen and she asks, uh, how is your little girl doing after she was sick? So if you are newer to my channel, um, last year, my youngest daughter, who is now four, she was three when this all happened, uh, had a seizure. And then she had another seizure a couple weeks later. And uh, it was obviously a very scary time for us. Um, but she is doing great uh, without going too much into it. We never really discovered the cause for her seizures. Um, she had one the first time in the middle of the day when I was at work. At the time, I was working outside of the home. And I got a phone call from my mom that she had had a seizure when she was napping, which was terrifying. Uh, we went to the hospital, we had um, a CT scan, we uh, went to a neurologist the next day. Um, they did a bunch of tests to kind of measure the brain activity and they didn't find anything. And then like three weeks later, she had another one and it was in the middle of, well, it wasn't the middle of the night, it was like 5 a.m., but she was also sleeping. So both of the ones that she had occurred when she was sleeping. And so what we determined, what I learned is that seizures are actually really common with kids and a lot of times they outgrow them. And, but anyway, she hasn't had a seizure since. It has been, she had her first one October 2nd and then her next one was like at the very end of October. She hasn't had one since. So we are very fortunate for that and she's doing great. So thank you so much for asking that really, when I get questions like that, um, it just, it really warms my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you for thinking of her. Okay, so the next question is a two part question and it comes from Anne. The first part of it is how do you stay motivated to exercise and eat well? So I really truly enjoy exercising. Um, it's my way to relieve stress. I look forward to it. Yes, I go through slumps sometimes where I don't really feel like it, but what I try and do is I just try and find something that I really enjoy. And if I find myself getting bored of that, I try, I just try and find something else. For me, that's my Peloton bike and I enjoy running. When I run, I find listening to audiobooks, like self-improvement audiobooks, or listening to really inspiring podcasts really uh, motivate me and make the run go by so much quicker. And I actually look forward to it because it's my time to kind of absorb that content. You know, when my kids are around, we're, we're watching kid programming or we're listening to kid music and when they're in the car, I don't really have a lot of time to absorb this type of content that's for me, except when I exercise. So I actually really look forward to it. Um, one audiobook that I'm reading right now that I am loving and I feel like every single woman needs to read this book, it's called Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I am almost done with it. I think I have two more chapters left and I have can already say that it's really positively impacted my day-to-day -day life. Um, it is very relatable. Um, it's just an incredible book. I don't know what more to say except you have to read it if you have not. I also listen to podcasts where like really successful, inspiring women are interviewed and I like to hear their story and get their advice. I don't know. It just, it really helps me stay in the right positive mindset um, and frame of mind. Because uh, I do think that all of that ties back into eating well and exercising. You know what I mean? I feel like if, if you're, I feel like where it all starts is in your head. And if you have a positive attitude about your life, about your day, about, you know, just outlook on things and you're not always negative Nancy in your head or always complaining in your head or just always seeing the bad in things. If you, if you have a brain that programs to always see the good, I feel like you make better choices all around. You know, you're more productive in your work life you typically make healthier eating habits. I just feel like it's all connected. You know, I feel like it's all connected. So um, that really works for me. The second part was, do you ever fall off the wagon and overeat or possibly gain a few pounds? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, if so, how do you stop that from becoming discouraging and snowballing into a bigger problem? So I actually struggle with this a lot. I think a lot of women do. I don't know, one thing I don't want to, people to think about me, just because I do enjoy exercise and health and I post pictures of my green smoothie and my, myself on a run, like yes, I enjoy those things, but that doesn't mean that I don't have my days where I find myself in the pantry stuffing my face with goldfish, you know, or drinking three glasses of wine and then eating ice cream bars, because that totally happens. And you know, I think my advice, I don't, really, I don't even really feel qualified to give advice because I struggle with this all the time and I haven't found the answer to overcome it because I still do it. 
But I think for me, what I do is that I, the way that I don't let it snowball into like weeks of doing this or several days of doing this is I really look at the next day as the start to a new chance to get back on track. You know, um, I feel like I used to be one of those people that would be like, oh, on the first of the month or oh, on Monday, it's Thursday and I got off the wagon. So let me just you know, let me just enjoy Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then get back on Monday. No, not really. Like I look at Friday as the day that I start back, you know? Um, so I think it's, again, it's all in your mindset. And I think too, personally for me, like I just feel bad when I do that. Like not, not guilt. I mean, I have guilt clearly, but physically I feel bad. I wake up the next day and I'm tired. I feel like I have a food hangover. I'm cranky. Like I'm really in tune to how food makes my body feel. Um, and so that's kind of a motivator for me to be like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to do that every day. Yes. It's okay to do it every now and then, or maybe not so much that it's okay, but yes, I know that's going to happen because I can't put my pressure, that pressure on myself for it not to happen. But, um, but I'm aware that when I do that, it's, I don't want to do that every day because I don't feel good, you know? So I think, you know, really being in tune with the way that your um, eating habits affect the way that you feel, um, I think really helps. Okay, so Tina says, uh, do I have tips for balancing work, kids, marriage, and your own needs? I think for myself, what really helps me is like planning my week. So on Sunday nights, I always sit down after I put the kids to bed and I plan my week. So I look at my monthly calendar and I write down everything that needs, you know, day by day, everything that I have, like appointments or calls or whatever I need to get done. And then I look at my workout schedule. So I look at, okay, I know I want to work out at least four days, ideally five days this week. When is the best time to do that? Okay, so I need to film. Well, when, it's not just like sitting in front of a camera. No, when I film, I, I have to have my hair washed. I can't sit here with sweaty ponytail hair. So I look at, okay, if I've got four hours while the kids are in preschool, uh, it's in, a priority for me to film first while I have fresh hair and then I can go exercise. So I kind of like, but I do look at each day and I plan when I'm going to find time to exercise because if I don't, that's not going to happen. And for me, that's how I feel balanced and how I feel um, that's, I need that. Like I need it time to exercise that just keeps everything else in my life where I want it to be. It keeps my mood where I want to be. It keeps my stress levels where I need them to be. Um, it just makes me uh, a better wife and mother all around. So I encourage you to find out what that is for you, whether that is working out or it's taking a walk with your neighbor or it's reading or whatever it is, like find out what that is and make time for that. Because I think that's kind of where it starts, at least for me to feeling balanced. I also am trying to get better about this. So with what I do with YouTube, it requires me to be on my phone a lot. You know, I get comments, I have to reply to comments on Instagram, on Facebook. We have Facebook group pages. There's always a comment or a message that I need to reply to. And what I have had to accept is that I can't get to them all anymore. Um, but I also have to accept that um, I don't have to get to them all right now you know, and I'm trying to be better about scheduling. Okay. For 45 minutes in the morning, you're going to reply to comments and direct messages and emails, and maybe for 30 minutes in the middle of the day. And then maybe for 45 minutes at the end of the day, you are going to sit down and that's what you're going to do. And you don't need to pick up your phone in between and do that because what I found myself becoming, um, is very distracted when I'm around my kids. Like I don't want to be around my phone all the time. And the text message alert just drives me insane. <laughs> um, especially, you know, when I'm, when I have my kids and my kids and I are trying to play or we're watching a movie or we're doing something, it's so easy to get distracted by this, especially for what I do, but for all of us, I think. And I just make a commitment and my promise to myself to like, you know, consciously not feel the need to be so connected and available to everyone all the time. You know what I mean? Like pick my priorities, which are my children and my husband. And that's where my attention goes when I'm with them. It's still a struggle. Like I'm not going to say that I've mastered that, but, um, I don't know. That's, that's kind of what helps me at the end of the day, at the end of the day. And I look back at my day and I think, okay, how was this a good day or what can I do better tomorrow? Um, I feel good if I felt like I had quality time with my children and they got my attention. I feel good if I feel like I was productive and I contributed something to my YouTube community or my Facebook community or my Instagram community. Like if I feel like I was engaged with that community, I feel like that's a good day. And if I exercise, I feel like that's a good day. Um, and if the house is picked up, that's a bonus. But I think it's just like, you know, choosing the top things that at the end of the day, what's going to make you feel like you had a good day and making those the priority, if that makes sense. I don't know if that was a long-winded answer, but that's kind of how I feel. Okay, so the next one's from Heather. This is three questions. The first one is favorite TV shows. 
Um, lately, I haven't been able to watch as much TV, but if, when I do have time to watch TV, it is Bravo TV all day long. So it's Real Housewives of OC, Beverly Hills. I even like New York. Um, it's Southern Charm, the original Southern Charm. I find myself sucked into that. And then actually, oddly enough, Sophia the First, which is a kid's program that I don't know why, but watching it just makes me happy because it reminds me of when uh, Brooklyn was my oldest, when she was a little baby and we lived in our old house and we just like, it was just her and I all the time. <laughs> we used to watch that show. It just takes me back to that time and it was a special time. So those are my favorite shows. Okay, number two, where do you like to go for date night? Uh, so there are a few places that I like to go. I love to have sushi. Um, I actually, oddly enough, like to go to the restaurant inside Nordstrom, not because I want to shop with my husband, but just because I like the, they have a salad there that I love. And he's so funny. He's like, where do you want to go for date night? And he's like, don't say Nordstrom, <laughs> but I really like the food there. Uh, so yeah, just going out to eat where I, I don't really try new restaurants. I kind of pick ones that I like and I stay there. There's a steakhouse that I really like here in Austin called Perry's. Um, yeah, just going out to eat. Like I like going out to eat, sitting down, having like uninterrupted conversation with my husband and having good wine. Like that is what is the perfect date night for me. Okay. And then three, um, maybe a video in itself of foolproof daytime summer pool makeup. That is a good suggestion. I've done a couple of videos that I think could kind of tie into that, but okay. So the next one is by Brooke, uh, Brooke's beauty and life bites. That's her YouTube channel. I just started my YouTube channel. So I'd love to know your tips on how you grew your channel. Okay, so I've been on YouTube for a little over four years and I grew pretty slowly. I definitely had some um, things that happened during these four years that gave me a boost in growth, but I think the best advice, and it's probably something that you've heard all the time anyway, is just consistency. You know, I grew very slowly those first two years because I really wasn't consistent. I don't, I didn't really start doing like two to three videos a week until like my second or third year, maybe, maybe even my third year. Uh, and so when I was only uploading once every three weeks, like nothing was happening. So you just have to be consistent. You have to be authentic. I think too, that's why I struggled in the beginning because I wasn't being authentic. I was watching all these younger YouTubers and I was trying to copycat them and I'm not 21 years old. You know, when I started my channel, I was 31. Um, but you know, I was just in a different stage in my life. I was a mom. I was in my thirties. Um, I wasn't 21, you know, uh, but I was acting like I was, I was trying to be like that channel. I was trying to like connect with that audience and that audience is connect, going to connect with me really, you know? And so once I started being consistent and once I started being myself, even if I thought that was not as entertaining or boring or not as um, fun to watch as the younger ones, it's who I am. And that's when I found the audience that like really connected with me and um, just kind of catered to like serving them what they wanted. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think it's just like consistent and being authentic. Um, is the best advice I can give. I think those are the two most important things. Okay, the next one is how to apply eyelashes. I actually think I did a video a long time ago on that, um, but it's certainly I can do that again. Okay, so this is from Tracy. Lisa, this is a more personal question. I went through some pretty devastating, uh, pretty something devastating in February. I actually remember that, Tracy, I'm sorry. Uh, and I was wondering what you do to get through hard times. I'm doing better, but sometimes it just hits me like a ton of bricks. I also want you to know that your videos were and still a very nice escape. Aww. Um, okay. So when I get through, go through really hard times, I think my advice to getting through really difficult times is just first allowing yourself to kind of mourn or grieve, uh, for whatever you're going through, you know, like you have to address those feelings. You can't just put them under the rug and, and pretend that they're not there and suppress them. Like you have to feel them and you have to go through that pain and cry and um, talk about it, you know, whether that's with a therapist or with someone very, very close to you that you love and trust, um, but allowing yourself that time, you know, but also taking time to like see the good that you have in your life and what to be grateful for, you know, um, uh, the small and the large things and to know that life is to know that this is a season of life. You know, life is hard and we all go through that at some point, you know, some of us may have not gone through something as of yet, but we will, you know, we are all going to suffer loss and grief, um, in our lifetime and just know that it's a season. And on the other side of that, um, and then you'll, you will come out on the other side, you know, and that whether it's two months, six months, two years, you know, I don't know what depends on what you're going through, but just know that one day you're going to look back on this time and um, it's not going to um, be as painful as it is right now. You know what I mean? Just know that it's going to get better. And one day you will likely look back and like, know that you're a stronger person 
uh, for what you went through, you know, and just know that it's temporary. I don't know. That's kind of my advice. I don't know if that's great advice or not. Um, what did I do before I started YouTube? This is from Sierra. So I, uh, before I had kids, I was in media sales. So I sold for a TV station. I sold advertising. So I worked for the NBC and the CBS affiliate, um, our local affiliate here in Austin. And I sold advertising. So when you would see commercials on TV, those were my clients. Um, and then I had Brooklyn and uh, stayed home for a couple of years. And then I had Kate and I was home for another about another year. And then I went back to work part-time and I did the same thing for a radio station. So, I, so basically I was an account rep for um, broadcast media. That's what I did. I was always in a sales position. How I started my YouTube channel is by Rosanna. Uh, so I started a little over four years ago. I was pregnant with Kate. I was actually like eight months pregnant when I filmed my first video. And uh, before that I had been doing wedding makeup um, sometimes every weekend and it kind of tapered off to like a couple of times a month. But I knew that my days of doing wedding makeup were going to come to an end because with two little girls at home and then um, at the time I wasn't working. So my, my husband was working during the week and then on the weekends I was working doing wedding makeup and we just never had quality time as a family. And I knew that that's not really how I wanted. Um, I, I just didn't want that schedule anymore. Uh, so I knew I was going to have to give up doing makeup, but I really truly loved makeup and I started watching YouTube videos and I figured this would be a good outlet for me to teach makeup, which is really what I love to do. Um, this would be a good outlet. So I just, you know, opened a YouTube account and I had a little cheap camcorder on this cheap little $10 tripod and uh, I propped it up in my daughter's crib. She was born yet. She was still in the tummy. I propped it up in her crib and filmed my first YouTube video. I'll actually link that one down below for you to check it out. It's kind of funny to see, um, you know, how far the videos have evolved since then. But yeah, I just decided to start. I was really naive. I had no idea, no idea that like people did this as a job. I had no idea that I did, actually, I think was, I think I was doing YouTube for at least a year before I realized that anyone was uh, monetizing the platform. I, I didn't know. Um, and I did YouTube for three years before I made a single dollar, a single dollar. So if you're interested in doing YouTube, I think my best advice is um, just to, you know, make sure that your passion is there uh, and that you would do this whether you made, you know, any money or not, because you will likely spend a lot of time, you will spend a lot of time um, doing it. It just has to be something that you do because you really enjoy it. You know what I mean? Um, that would be my advice. How did you learn to apply makeup so beautifully? Was it mainly at MAC? Um, also, I just wanted to say that I love your videos with Jessica. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, I picked up a few tips watching them. Oh, good. Um, oh, and then asking what Paul does for a living. Okay, so first I'll address the first question. Uh, how did you learn how to apply makeup so beautifully? Well, thank you so much. I definitely think working at MAC is where I can give my credit to. I always loved makeup. Uh, before I started working at MAC, I didn't have any like professional experience. I was very insecure. And for my interview for MAC, I had to do someone's makeup. And I remember I was so terrified. I practiced for hours leading up to that interview. Um, but really just being thrown into it and having people of all different ages and skin tones and skin textures, every it, just people coming up on a daily basis asking for you to do their makeup. That's how I learned practicing and practicing and being put in uncomfortable situations, situations where I thought, oh, I don't know how to handle this skin type or what foundations look best and just doing it. You know, I did that for five years um, and also learning from all the makeup artists that work there. I think some of the most talented makeup artists that I've ever worked for or that I've ever met worked for MAC that I worked with. Some of them have gone on to be celebrity makeup artists. Um, there's one girl that I worked with. Uh, I'll actually link her Instagram below. Her and I worked at Saks together. And I'll never forget her. She just had this this personality that was like larger than life. And she was so glamorous and she was a super talented makeup artist. And she was going to UT. I think she was studying like political science or something like not makeup or art related. And I remember her telling that we were working at the mat counter. And I remember her saying, I'm going to be a celebrity makeup artist one day. I'm going to be it. Like she had more confidence than anyone I had ever met. She just owned it. And uh, she did. She she moved to New York. And I think she worked for Mac for a little while. And now this girl does like, her, her, all she does is celebrities. Um, it's pretty amazing. I think she even like went and did Beyonce's makeup for a tour once. Yeah, big time. Uh, so just being able to learn from people like that really like upped my skill level for sure. Um, okay. Also, okay. I don't think you've mentioned what your husband does. So my husband works for a company that does cybersecurity. So they're essentially like ethical hackers. So companies basically hire them to, um, kind of like almost hack into their systems to see where the, their vulnerabilities are. And he does all the, like the, the business development and marketing for that company. So pretty cool. They do some really neat nerdy things, but very smart guys. I think the people that he works with are some of the smartest people that I know.
Okay, you may have shared this and I missed it, but what is your age? So I am 35. I will be 36 in January of next year. Um, I don't know if I look that or if I look older or younger. I've been told I look 55 on my channel and I've been told I look 21 on my channel. So I don't know where I fall, but I'm 35 years old. The next one is from Chloe. She says, how to maintain a positive outlook during the first few months, year of a newborn baby's life. How do you and your husband maintain a strong marriage while having to take care of young children? Oh, I love this question. This is such a good question. How to maintain a positive outlook during the first few months of a newborn life. Okay, so if I go back, it's so funny how when you're out of it and you look back on that time, you don't remember it being hard. You know what I mean? Um, but I know it certainly was. I do know that when I had my first daughter, um, I struggled those first six months. That first year, I struggled with not with being a mom. I think I struggled with like my identity because before I had Brooklyn, I, I worked Monday through Friday at the TV station and I had a pretty successful career. And then on the weekends, I actually had a wedding makeup business. So I would do wedding makeup, but I also had, um, you know, three or four makeup artists that worked with me and that I would contract out to do wedding makeup. So I had, a, you know, I had someone that managed that business. Like I had two very successful, I had a career and then I did a successful business. And I had kind of operated that way for years until having Brooklyn. I was always busy and I was always working. I never said no to things. I just worked, 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 worked so much. And then I had Brooklyn and I quit both. I quit my job and I quit doing makeup. When I was pregnant with Brooklyn and I imagined like myself as a mother, I like imagined me being this perfect mom, you know, and I just wanted to be the best mom. And all I wanted to do was be a mom and I wanted to give up everything else. And I did it. And then I was a stay-at-home mom and I never, never stayed at home. You know, I've just always worked. I mean, since I was 14 years old, I was bagging groceries at a grocery store when I was 14. And I don't think I've ever gone more than two weeks without a job since 14 years old. And so all of a sudden, all of that stopped and I had this baby and I, you know, I remember the first couple of months, it was just like, oh, some of the best months of my life, the best days of my life, even though I was tired and exhausted, it was incredible. And then it, maybe it took about four or five months to that to kind of wear off. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, who am I? Like, I really struggled with who I was and I had just turned 29. So I was like at the end of my twenties, which I think whether you have children or not, I feel like that's kind of a transitional stage of life too. You know what I mean? And so I really struggled with figuring out who I was and, um, and then adding motherhood and, and quitting everything that I had known before that. I don't know, really wore on me. And so I actually started a network marketing business. I became a Rodana Builds consultant. And that really helped me a lot because I met some really, really inspiring, positive women. I became part of this group of women that were just very supportive to each other. And um, I really liked that. And I was successful with that. Um, you know, I, I threw myself into that and I loved it and I was passionate about it and I was excited about it. Um, and I think that that really did help me kind of create that identity because I knew I didn't want to go back to work. I knew I wanted to be home with my kids, but I also knew I wanted, I, I needed something that was me, that was mine. that was a business that was made me feel like accomplished. Like I could set goals and be challenged. And that was, that business was kind of perfect for me at that time. Uh, the wedding makeup wasn't because again, it was always on the weekends. And if there were weddings, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'd be all about doing wedding makeup, but weddings are on Saturday and Sundays. And I just wasn't, that was like a non-negotiable for me because that was my time with my husband. So I think that that really helped me. Um, I forget what the question was, but I think that's how it, that helped me get through that time was finding something that surrounded myself with positive people uh, that made me feel, that lifted me up and also that made me feel like um, proud of myself. You know what I mean? Like it, it just made me feel like I had something of my own, you know, uh, and I liked that. It was also very flexible. So that's personally what helped me. How do you and your husband maintain a strong marriage while having and taking care of young children? That's a really great question. So I will never forget this. Uh, when we, we had already had Brooklyn, I don't know if we had Kate yet, but we went to a marriaging workshop that was one day. Some of our friends that are real active in their church invited us to one day marriage workshop that they do every year. I think it was on January 1st. And it was a day where we all went out and there was this couple as a pastor and his wife from Houston. And they do this, they go around and they spend one day with um, couples. And it was interesting because there were some couples in there that were like, it was their first year of marriage. And there were some couples in there that had been married for 26 years. And then there was us and we had been married for uh, probably five, no. Anyway, we've been married for seven, eight years, eight years probably. At the so there's all, you know, stages of marriages. But anyway, these, these, this base, this couple basically shared their experiences and kind of like things you could do to have a great marriage. And they talked about how they just really talked about like the, the foundation of a strong marriage. And one thing I'll never forget is they talked about like couples that, that come to them in crisis, you know, couples that they're counseling because they're thinking about getting divorced. 
and uh, how they had a couple that was um, had been married for like 25 years. And they talked about how, you know, a lot of times what happens are couples get so focused on just the children, you know, they, they've kind of let go of their relationship and their bond and they don't find things in common anymore and they don't work towards that. And it's all about the kids, just the kids, just the kids, just the kids. Well, when the kids grow up and move out of the house, then it's like, okay, well, now what do we do? Who are you? Who am I? Like, you don't know that person anymore. And when you don't have the children to focus on, you're kind of forced to realize that like, wow, I don't, we have not worked on us, you know? And, um, they talked about how they like do every one night a month, they would like get a hotel room and it would just be mommy, daddy night, you know, and they would go and have one night to themselves. We aren't able to do that because we have little kids. We are very fortunate because my mom lives in here in Austin and she loves having the girls over and they love going to her house. So they see her quite a bit and they stay the night with her quite a bit. And so that definitely helps us. But he also talked about how a really hard time on marriages is when you have young kids because it is stressful and you have these, these little kids that are, that need you so much. I mean, they need you for everything. They can't even wipe their bottoms without you, you know? So you are just constantly serving, serving, serving all day. It's just like important to like, I don't know. I just try to remind myself, like when I find myself like irritable or with no patience at the end of the day and my husband walks in the door, like, I mean, he doesn't know like what I have dealt with all day, you know? And, um, so I try and be aware of that and like recognize, okay, Lisa, your patience is low and you're kind of irritable because so-and-so had a meltdown or was whiny or whatever, but like, that's not his fault. Like try and not take it on him. I certainly do sometimes, <laughs> but I think it's just like being aware of that. I mean, I think if you find yourself like fighting all the time or arguing, cause we've been there, we've been in that place. It's like, you know, is that an issue with us or is it just us? Like, kind of like projecting our like irritability from something else external, like onto each other. And a lot of times that's what it is. So I just try and remind myself, I feel like I kind of went down a rabbit hole there to get back to the question directly, which is probably what you wanted to know most. Uh, we do make a lot of time for ourselves. So like I said, we have babysitters or my mom at least once a week and we either go out with each other or with friends. Sometimes I find that if we are always going out with friends and never just the two of us, like that's a problem. Like we need to make time for just the two of us. Actually next week, we're going to go and stay a night at a hotel um, one night and my mom's keeping the girls overnight. Uh, so that'll be fun. So we just, you know, try and make time for each other um, and also give each other our own time. You know what I mean? Like give each other our own time. I need my own time. He needs his own time and just respect that. You know what I mean? Like allow each other that time. I think is very important, but also know that the, the young years of raising children is tough and it's stressful on a marriage and, uh, just know that it's a season of life. It is a small season of your life. And, you know, I, I also think of the example that we're setting for our kids, you know, like, um, I don't want our kids to see us fight or argue or raise our voice to each other. I mean, that's just really important to me. You know, I think that really affects kids long-term and it also teaches your kids like what relationships and marriages are like if your kids are in a household where they're screaming and fighting all the time your kids think that's normal and it's likely that they are going to end up in a relationship in a marriage very similar to that if you could travel anywhere in the world money not being an issue where would you go and why Bora Bora without a doubt I love the beach if I have the opportunity to vacation I want to go to the beach uh and I think Bora Bora is probably the most beautiful beach in the world maybe maybe I'm wrong but I would love to go there what motivated you? Okay. So this is from Jamie. What motivated you to start your channel? Um, is the first question. Uh, I think I kind of already addressed this, but basically I was not able to do wedding makeup anymore and makeup is truly a passion of mine, especially teaching makeup. And I thought YouTube would be a good outlet for that. Which YouTubers, if any influenced you? Uh, so definitely Emily, Emily Noel. Uh, she was one of the first YouTubers that I started watching. Um, at the time, actually I was watching a lot of Jaclyn Hill. So I was, I, and I was watching a lot of Nikki tutorials. Top T, I really like, I really like um, her channel and she, those were kind of the channels that I watched in the beginning. Um, I don't really watch Jacqueline Hill anymore or Nikki tutorials, but I do watch Top T still. And of course I watch Emily. Yeah. So I would say that those are the channels that really influenced me at the time. Oh, and also who else was I watching? Candy. Candy Johnson was a channel I was watching. Oh, that's just on parentheses other than Stephanie Marie, Emily, and Marnie, clearly because I talk about them a lot. Okay. The next one is from Laura. Uh, and it's a couple of questions. The first one is what lessons have you learned through the years of being on YouTube on doing your makeup, but also dealing with haters? 
Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the dealing with haters. Um, I'm lucky that I don't get a lot of that. I think that definitely the positive way outweighs the negative, but occasionally I get some comments. Some of them are just rude, like you talk too much or whatever, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but then sometimes I've gotten some really nasty uh, messages, and it's the struggle, you know, sometimes I just want to, like, most I don't know, I just delete and block because you know what, people that are like really like nasty and hateful, they're not welcome here on my channel. Go somewhere else, don't bring that negativity over here because this is not the place for it. Uh, but sometimes like I have a moment of weakness and I have to reply, uh, but usually I just reply, which allows me to kind of get that out and then I um, block and delete. But what I've learned is too, I don't ever let it affect me. Like it doesn't affect me, which is so funny because I think people that do this, that go online to like troll and be rude and nasty, I don't know if they think that it uh, affects me or that it brings my day down or that I care because I really don't. Um, the way that I see people like that, when and I'm talking about the really nasty ones, the people like I, I had um, someone call me, uh, I won't even say the word because it's so nasty on my channel, but people like that, I'm, I feel sorry for them because you are not a happy person if you go and put that stuff out there to anyone. If you say that to anyone, but especially going on the internet and saying that to complete strangers, like something that is a reflection on that person and not on me. I have a happy life. I am happy. I am grateful. And I'm just grateful that I'm not living my life that way, you know? So I don't know. That's how I feel. It doesn't bother me at all. Which YouTubers inspire you through whom you've learned? Okay. So and through how I've learned valuable makeup technique. I know I always say Emily, but um, it's true. Like if I think about channels that inspire me, hers is one. And also um, Sona, as far as makeup techniques, Sona's channel, um, Sona Gasparian, I think is her name, Gasparian. She, I love watching her videos and she, I think she's a really super talented makeup artist. Um, she definitely inspires me uh, with her makeup abilities. What was your job like working at Mac? It was awesome. So when I started at Mac, I worked there part-time um, and I just worked at the counter. I was working like 12 hours a week. And I did that, and then I worked as an assistant key holder is what they called us, but I was basically an assistant manager of that counter. And then my last job with Mac was a trainer for Mac. So I um, moved to another city, and I had a region of South Texas that I would travel around and train. So anytime you were like new makeup artists, new people that were hired at Mac, I would do a week-long training with them um, along with my boss. And uh, we would do like quarterly trainings for all the artists, like on all the new products that were coming out. Uh, that was probably the coolest part about working for Mac was when I was in that position, but it was awesome. It was like a family. Everyone was so cool. Everyone was so different. Um, but very, uh, I don't know. We just, it was just a very good family. And it was when I left there and I went to like a corporate, well, Mac was corporate, but when I went to like a job that was like sales and it was really, uh, it wasn't so uh, warm and nurturing and loving. It, that's when I realized like, wow, Mac was a special place. Is it difficult being on YouTube since it seems like it's such a saturated market. Um, do you feel pressure to do things differently in a certain way? I don't think it's difficult to be on YouTube. I do think it's saturated, but I've kind of decided that uh, you can focus on growth. Obviously, I want to grow. You know, if I start losing subscribers on YouTube, um, that would not be good. <laughs> Obviously, I want to grow. Um, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't focused on how fast I'm growing. But at the same time, when I get discouraged, if I have like weeks of slow growth, and I get discouraged, I stop and I read comments from some of the subscribers that are like so loyal and always watching my videos and leave me the best encouraging comments. And I remember that it's not just about growing and finding new people. It's about serving the people that are here and that have been here with me, you know, for a month or for four years, you know, it's about serving those people and giving those people the content that keeps them coming back. And I think that if you just get so focused on doing something new to attract new people and you kind of lose who you are and you just, you don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not necessarily you lose who you are, but you have to, you have to think about like the audience that you have and giving them the content that they want, um, first and foremost and how you can do that and also attract new people. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, that is it. There are certainly other questions on here that were all makeup related. Um, I might do a separate video to address those, or I might just kind of take some of these and make like dedicated videos out of them over the course of the next couple of months. But thank you guys so much for those of you that submitted your questions. Thank you for giving me the time to prepare this video. I know that it took a couple of months in the making, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that this gives you a little bit more of insight into who I am. But, um, anyway, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.